community, which means that house wasn't responsible for any other crimes. They were crimes and incidences that occur at the residence. Does that make sense? Uh, you had four frauds, which means somebody's credit card was taken, those kind of things. Again, that doesn't impact the greater community. You had two crashes. You had two war services. You had one drug case, but it was because they made a traffic stop nearby. Okay? So it's not like you've got drugs invading the neighborhood. It just was a traffic stop where they found something. And it was simple possession of marijuana. Uh, you had one vandalism, and then you had two assaults, and one of those was domestic related. Again, nothing related to intentional harm to the community. That's exactly what I expect to see in a safe place. So, with all of that said, that's what you have. That's the foundation for what we're talking about tonight. So, the assessments are the biggest thing that I can provide you tonight. I will come out to your house, and we will make it now with all these people. It might take me a few weeks to get through them all. But I promise you we will. And I can't emphasize the importance of that assessment enough. Uh, I'll, I'll start with, does anybody have a red string hanging down from their garage door opener? Okay. So I want you to think about that when you go home tonight. If that red string is so that if you lose power, you can pull the red string and allow you to manually open the door. Here's what a burglar would do. If you have windows in that garage door, they'll push the window out, grab the string from the outside, then they'll open the garage door and shut it, and now no one can see the person inside the house. Then they're going to use whatever tools are in the garage to break into your house. So we want to get rid of the red string. But don't do that until you have a plan in place to where you can access the door in case there's a fire. And we talk about that. Even if you don't have windows, those red strings are always in the center of your garage door. Typically, I can walk, push in on the garage door just enough to give me a space, take a clothes hanger, run it through the space, grab the red string, and bring it to me. Okay? Again, you are honest, hardworking people. You don't think this way. Okay? Burglars do. Police officers do. So, we want to come out and fix all of that for you. We'll talk about how that looks. Okay? Those of you, have we, do we have a significant number of solicitors in the neighborhood? <coughs> Folks trying to sell things door to door? Yes. Okay, got some yeses, some noes. How many of you would not answer the door if you didn't know who it was? Be honest with you, say. You would just, I'll, I'll. a kid, a youngster, any other door. Right, if you, if you don't, if it's unsolicited and they're selling something, magazines, religious, whatever, how many would just assume, I'm, I'm not going to answer it, I'll let them go? So here's what burglars want. Burglaries and carry occur during the daytime for the most part, and they want empty houses. Okay? So if we pretend like we're not home, now they think the house is empty, and then they go around back and kick in the door while you're home, which is worst case scenario. So what we say for solicitors is answer it, but don't open it. Make sure they know someone is inside the house but stay behind the locked door in case they want to kick it in. Again, that's just another sample of what we're talking about there in the assessment. Okay? If you have teenagers who are staying home by themselves, you can always have them carry on a conversation with no one in particular. So they can get near the door and say, hey, I'll get it. The person on the outside doesn't know who they're talking to. Okay? And that way they can think, hey, there's more than one person here. I'm not interested in breaking in. Lots of ways we can manage that. Right? So, are you guys using nextdoor.com? Yes. Yes, no, okay. For those of you who aren't, nextdoor.com is a free social media site. Uh, what you can do right now is if you sign in, put your address in, it'll drop you in your community. Are you guys separated enclave from everybody else or is it all Welcome Ridge? It's all Welcome Ridge. It's all separate parts of Welcome Ridge. Okay. So you're, when you put your address in, next door knows where to send you. It'll drop you into your community. And without having to share any of your information, you can communicate with your neighbors. And remember, the first thing I talked about tonight was, can you communicate with your neighbors? So next door allows you to do that. You guys can communicate on the best realtor, the best contractor, or, hey, there's a strange car in my neighborhood. Does it belong to anybody? Is anybody using WhatsApp? We've got another group using WhatsApp. Very good. I can't be on everybody's WhatsApp. 
Um, that'd be a whole lot of WhatsApps across town for me. Um, WhatsApp's another media, uh, social media, or so an app in that situation. And so if this group right here lived on a street and they wanted to communicate quickly, they could use WhatsApp to talk amongst themselves. Okay? You can use all of those things. The benefit of next door from a police department standpoint is if a trend happens, if something's going on, and I need to let you all know, I can post to your neighborhood. I can't read your posts, so Big Brother's not watching, but I can post vital information to you. If you are talking about something and you want me to know about it, you have to email it to me. Not through Nextdoor, you have to actually email it to me. But Nextdoor allows you to communicate in us to you in, in, in an emergency, obviously, or if there were a trend. So we talk about the assessments at next door as two vital pieces that you can do relatively easily uh, and make yourself really, really hard to break into. So. I've been told that I talk too much, so I'm going to stop talking now and ask anybody have any questions. I'll answer what you have. Yes, ma'am. How long did the police come when the alarm went off? Uh, that I don't know. That's a great question. So the super, so you all are in District Two. Right, which is essentially the western district. Okay? We have three districts, uh, the north, west, and south. You're in west. You always have seven officers assigned to you. Okay? So you have a sergeant, a corporal, two supervisors, four officers working an individual beat. There are four beats out west, and then one that floats all four. If it's a very serious case, all of those officers will come wherever we need them. Burglary would be one of them. Okay? Because you're out west, you also have the opportunity, you might, are we Chatham County here, or are we parts of it? We're still away? Okay. So you, out this way, you might see a Wake County deputy. He would have authority to, to help. You might see Morrisville. You might see Durham County. You might see Chatham County. You might see a highway patrolman. All of those folks have authority to help if we need it. So you have all of that resource. And then you have, if you've driven up along 55, the cars that are unmarked, or the motorcycles, that's our traffic team, they also will respond if it's bad enough. The supervisor for your district, his name is Captain Jerry McCormick, he recently told me the average response time out here is three to eight minutes depending on the type of call, with the, the, middle, the medium five, five, oh six, somewhere in that range. Now I can tell you if you have a burglary and you're in the house, five minutes will feel like an eternity. Okay? It's just the nature of that event, which is why when we have an assessment, if you call me for your assessment, have I said you need to call me for an assessment? I think I'm kind of making sure that's an important message from tonight. If you call me for your assessment, we'll talk about how to create a safe room. What's that look like? What's that plan look like for your family? Those of you who have school-age children, if I ask that young lady right there what code red or lockdown is, she can tell me from her school. What you're trying to do is create that at home. So if there is a break-in while you're home, you're doing something instead of just sitting there. Okay? We talk about that during the assessment. So, so that's generally where we're at. What we want you to do, if there is a real event, is even if you know your alarm has called, call us anyway. Because what you do is you verify the, the event, and then we bring everything we've got. Okay? If you just let it be a naturalized alarm, you're going to get a normal cold response, which means one officer, no blue lights and siren. If we know it's a real live event, you're going to get everybody we got as fast as we can get here. So we always want to know as much information as possible. Yes, ma'am. So the safe area that you were talking about? The what? The safe area in mm -hmm. the house that mm -hmm. you create, does it need to be like a... What, what it's not a fortress. No, it's not like the movie either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially that. if you have little ones that like scream or whatever. That's then correct. What do you do with that? That's all right. Movie? So noise isn't an issue. In fact, we want people to make noise because that person's going to know you're in the house. Typically when they have a break-in, when we have a break-in in someone's home, the burglar thought it was empty, and the moment they realize somebody's in the house, they run off because they're not interested in dealing with people. Okay? They want empty houses to steal things unabated and then get away. Okay. In that situation, what we typically talk about is a master bedroom closet. It's big enough to fit everybody in the house. You're already in that space potentially. But we say if that closet has one door and that door opens into the closet, it's a good space. 
The reason being is, if it opens in, I can barricade it with my body. I can push things in front of it to keep it from opening in. If it opens away from me, the only thing I can do is hold the handle. Okay? So that's what we talk about. We talk about getting into that space, barricading that door. And even if you don't have an alarm, you may have a panic button for your car. Keep your spare key fob in that closet. Set your car alarm off. Now you're making a bunch of noise. And everybody calls when there's a car alarm going off at 3 in the morning, right? <laughs> nobody can sleep. <laughs> so you use that if you don't have an alarm. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about safe room. Now it doesn't have to be the closet. If there's another space in the house that you like better, you can do that. Be careful with attic spaces because if it's unair conditioned in July in North Carolina, you spend 35 minutes in there in 130 degree weather, that's not good for you. So be careful of unair conditioned spaces if you choose to use that as your safe room. But we can talk about that when you call me for your assessment. <laughs>